if they don't trade him, then it's then it goes on. But if they do, it's a major decision. And not trading him is a decision. Like trading him or not trading him, both are decisions. I, I do think it gets lost a little bit on the internet because people root for I'm not even saying necessarily 49er fans, but people just eat this stuff up, all this stuff that goes viral. You know, Debo, I would say right now is partly this draft really sucks. Like it's just let's let's call a spade a spade. It's pretty irrelevant. Uh, partly because no quarterbacks, but even their star power is like Sauce Gardner. I'm sorry, you played at Cincinnati. Most people couldn't point the guy out of a lineup. So the moment this happened with Debo, it is like it feels 50 fold bigger than anything draft related. Now, maybe if you're a Giants or a Jets fan, it's a little different, but I'd say the Jets, the moment they start getting connected, and we'll talk about the potential trades, like Debo is a bigger deal than anyone they draft if they traded for him. So he's a huge story. I mean, I've that thing that. I don't know if it went viral. I just saw it on Instagram. I forwarded it to you. Brett Veach, you know, asked. They said he's made major trades the last couple of years. Who are you going to trade for this year? He said Debo Samuel. And then he started laughing, which the gem of the Chiefs. Wh- while it was funny, I was like, I don't know if you can say that. Yeah, I don't uh, know you immediately text me back. You're like, if you're the Niners, like, fuck you. You're not allowed to say that. Yeah. So I, I think people get lost because so many things like the NBA has become a transactional league. Guys move at just insane speeds the last five or six years. Trade they people demand trades and they get traded immediately. Obviously, the NFL has always operated differently, but this offseason, people got traded at rapid rates. I mean, we're just talking about Russell Wilson, right? Russell Wilson is sitting courtside at the Nuggets game because he's on the Denver Broncos. And that's it's pretty insane, right? Mm-hmm. So I I think people that think there's validity in anytime you ask for a trade now or just trade buzz that a guy might get traded because of what just recently happened. But I don't think we can forget the Niners have no they don't have to do a goddamn thing. They yeah. do not have to trade their best player or one of you know their best offensive player. Well, I'm yeah. a Trent, but you, you know what I mean. It's hard to yes. judge. You know the 49ers hierarchy sometimes of players. It is I, like a badass the, dominant player. I said the other day I, he's more important than Nick Bosa, and then I was thinking about it the next day in the car while I was driving, and I'm like, the one thing, right? Even if you wanted to make that argument, which I made, which I did make, that he he carried them to the postseason. You'd also say just the the cost of replacement is much higher on Nick Bosa than it is. Like you said the other day, how do you get Nick Bosa's? Well, you better be drafting in the top five. <laughs> That's how you get them, right? Well, what, Whereas, why, why do you think the Chiefs getting rid of Tyree Kill? They think they can get a guy in the late twenties to replace some of that production. Where if they wouldn't have traded Chris Jones, because they're like, we'll never get a Chris Jones at twenty nine, right? Yeah, but but you know the the Chiefs the Chiefs margin for error with their skill guys is a little bigger because their quarterback's so good and they have. The tight end, which the Niners have, you know, Ayuk and, and Kittle as well. But I think the Niners' margin for error is a little smaller. Like, they need – it's harder for them to give up their best playmakers on offense because their quarterback is not Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Um, and I, well, I, I'm he's interested – He's had he's had two career starts? <laughs> two right. career starts. Three Coming in the last North two Coast years, State. if you count his one college game. Um, <laughs> so not much. I'll be interested if we, you know, if you're listening to this before John Lynch and we'll react to John Lynch too, but like, I'll be interested in what he says Monday and if Kyle shows up or not, like he did last year, but <clears throat> do, like, do the Niners feel like they have to really try and massage the situation with Debo? Are they going to try and there's two ways to try and get Debo Samuel to come back to your team, play nice or play hardball. Like those are the two options. Go out of your way to compliment him and say you love him and say you want him here and say you're so important to us. And that tends to be John Lynch's M.O. And I, I would imagine that's some version of the tack that he takes on Monday. But you don't have to go over the top, right? This is not, and we'll talk about value, but this is not Devante who has the money and the leverage to say, I'm just not showing up. It, the situ- this situation is a little bit different. And I think for the 49ers, they're probably a little more inclined to keep Debo than the Packers would have felt to keep Devante because the Packers have Aaron Rodgers. So I'll be interested to see what level of sort of desperation is not the word, but do they feel like they have to placate to Debo or do they feel like, okay, let's see, let's see if he refuses to show up. He's not made it, that it, much money yet. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, the Niners, like they didn't create this situation. This feels pretty I mean, Debo, I guess, did tell Jeff Darlington, but it, I mean, this is Debo created. It's not like the night, like they're at odds. Like ultimately, what if the Niners, like, well, we're not at odds. We'd never planned on getting rid of them. Like this, he wants to go, right? I, I think we just keep talking about it like it's two sides kind of battling. Right. What if the Niners don't look at it like that at all? 
And what if the Niners are willing to pay him like one of the top receivers in the NFL? Yeah, or just, I mean, compensate him at a really high level, right? I mean, I think that's where it gets a little complicated, the money, right? Because are we sure that these other teams that are going to trade for him would immediately just give him $75 million? Or would they also probably want it? You know, oh, they'd want to pay him 63. Because again, he doesn't have the, he, he doesn't now he has the ability to not sign a contract, but and no one, I guess, would trade a shitload, which the Niners are people keep getting arguing in my timeline about like the, his value relative to these other guys and how could it's simply supply and demand. The 49ers don't want to get rid of this guy. So if you don't want to get rid of him to get if you want the player, you have to give me an astronomical amount. And then you also have to pay him. Like, that's just the cost of doing business if you want Debo Samuel. Because ultimately, Debo Samuel is on my team. He's the 49ers asset. He's His contract is to the 49ers. And he's still under contract. He's not a free agent. So it's not like, you know, he's a, there's franchise tagging him. He's refusing to sign. Like, no, he's, he's still got another year on his four-year contract. So I, I, I think this has become... I, I, I just think it's become a little player movement push kind of a... Potent, unless the Niners were already thinking about moving him because they never intended to pay him, which would right, be yeah. somewhat news to, I think, people. Because that would be a little yes. crazy. That would be like, yeah. you guys are kind of getting arrogant. Which I, I, I hesitate to say because they had nothing to do with this. I mean, I bet they were just planning on like, we'll work on a contract. He's not going anywhere. Like, But the, if you just go on the internet, it's like World War fucking six trades happening. People are freaking out, which I, I guess I understand. But some of these videos of like his mom in the kitchen, it's like... It's just, it's, I, it's look, a lot. Seven, seven people sent me that video. Then you sent me that video. I couldn't get through that video. I truly have not watched that whole video. I've clicked on it four times. I've never gotten through it. I have, I don't care. Because there's it's just not, a lot of videos going viral of people talking in the background about money that are clearly family oriented. And I I've, know, always had, I've always had, I've always had, like to on. me, that, that, that he's in that video. I, I actually like this video the yeah, most out video. of all the family videos. For those of you listening on the present. podcast, it's the club video we're showing now. <laughs> Yeah, and he's I, I just saw him on Instagram watching the Warriors game scrolling around and he's in LA right now with his management team eating sushi at Nobu in Malibu, which I've mm. heard is a fantastic place. I went to Nobu in Manhattan uh many years ago, John, and it was it was good. <laughs> on the Warriors? Uh Joe Lake paid. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um all the security guys stayed outside and ate pizza. Um try, waiting for to tackle a pita protester. But yeah, I think Tyreek and Devontae and Debo are different in the sense that Devontae had six. I said this the other day. Devontae had sixty million dollars he'd already made in his career. He he had a little more. He'd signed multiple contracts. He had the ability to say to the Packers, "I'm not coming." And the Packers, you know, maybe they maybe they were more inclined to go get the value for him and go draft a guy. The Chiefs were not going to pay Tyreek. He just he had to go. So. But, uh yeah, do you know my takeaway from Veach even mentioning Debo and the way he smiled? Like he's kind of laughing, but I, he clearly thinks he's sweet, right? And they would <laughs> love to have him on the team, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that that's part of like this guy's value is very high. People liked him in the draft a lot. He was very very well liked in the draft. The question was injuries. What he did last year is. A lot of these people, I mean, Beach has been in the NFL for almost 20 years. Andy's been in the NFL. 30, like, once you throw on that tape, if you've been in the league a long time, you just go, I don't know if I've ever quite seen anything like this, right? Like, ultimately, again, I think Devontae is a Which Hall is partly of Famer. Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, but, I mean, when you start thinking, like, do you think the Chiefs would be able to use him, right? Because I'd say that would be one yeah. place that would be very scary. Yeah. Well, the teams that were going to want him, that's where you, you get to the conversation about what what is it about with Debo. The teams are going to want him are going to be interested in using him the same way, <laughs> you know, so the idea of not being a wide back and, and look, I don't think, I don't think Kyle Shanahan's ideal world is giving the ball to Debo Samuel nine times a game. Like he doesn't well, want him to get hurt. He drafted either. multiple running backs. He needs him. He needs him on his team. Like he doesn't want him getting hurt. He'd like Trey so. Sermon to be a good player. I, the, the, to me, my favorite part about this story is it's, there's going to be some resolution this week. He's either getting traded or he's not. And if he's not, he can still keep bitching and moaning. And again, he's not really, I haven't seen him really complain. So I hate even saying that the internet complaining for him. He ain't, if, if he doesn't get traded this week, like he ain't going anywhere. Now he may not show up for a while, but it's like he on the Niners, which is like, we're, we're getting a date. Like it's, it's either happening or it's not happening now. Cause there, to me, there is no chance with them, their goal of winning that to, to, to me, trade him in the fall. 